Welcome in Outkick the Show. I hope all of you are having fantastic Tuesdays wherever you may be across this great country or this great land. Encourage you to go read today's anonymous mailbag. I guarantee it will entertain you. Also encourage you right off the top to go subscribe for our Outkick VIP. We had an incredible month of July, the first full month since Jason Whitlock started to work with us. He's now in Nashville. We're going to have a lot of fun coming your direction. A lot to get into. Encourage you out there to go follow OutKick on Twitter and to go sign up for the OutKick VIP. We just ordered thousands, my understanding, of new copies of my book. So if you are an OutKick VIP and you have not yet gotten your autographed copy of my book, it's because we completely sold out and we had to go back to the publisher and send them back to the printer in order to get more copies of my book available. So you will get your copy. You will be able to uh, get a copy sooner or later. But that is where we are headed. All right? Uh, Several different things to get into. Uh, Coronavirus. The Corona Bros. Uh, Big 12 goes to 10 games. Zion dominates versus the Grizz as the Grizz fall to 0-3 in the bubble. PGA is crushing everybody in ratings. Homicides, unfortunately, are surging. The Pac-12 player demands are insane. And TikTok is being bought in uh, America by an American company. We're going to start with the coronavirus. All right? What you are going to see is a rapid pivot from the second wave now that the second wave has peaked it has crashed and it produced nothing like what happened in New York and I am going to keep hammering this because I think it's significant all of the states other than New York and New Jersey and Massachusetts and Pennsylvania and Illinois and all of the states that followed the lead of Andrew Cuomo have pretty much handled the coronavirus fine It's been roughly akin to the flu in most states across the country except for the disaster that happened in New York. And I've got a stat for you right off the top. I said it yesterday, but I'm going to keep hammering it. The 11 SEC states, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky... If I forgot any SEC states, my apology, there are 11 of them. All of the 11 states combined in the SEC do not have, I want to reiterate this, do not have as many deaths as New York State by itself. That's despite the fact that the SEC states have 100 million people living in them as opposed to 19.5 million in New York. So you have five times the population in the, in the states in the South and they have one, they have less overall deaths than is going on in New York by itself, okay? This is the biggest story out there right now. Now that the peak has been hit in Florida, now that the peak has been hit in Texas, now that the peak has been hit in Arizona, Ducey, Abbott, and DeSantis, who have all been the whipping boy of the media, getting absolutely crushed by the media, all of them have destroyed their favored son, Andrew Cuomo, in terms of performance in state. If the media had any honesty whatsoever, they would be opening and demanding congressional investigations into what went wrong in New York, how in the world did the death rate end up where it did, Andrew Cuomo has tens of thousands of deaths on his conscience because he is a failed governor, the worst governor of the 21st century. I just think it should be the number one story by far. Instead, most people are ignoring it even as the death rate in New York becomes even more indefensible with the fact that we've seen the peak in Florida, we've seen the peak in Texas, we've seen the peak in Arizona. It appears almost every SEC state is peaking around the same time and they're all now on the backside of their outbreaks. What I hope is that there is an immunity that is reached that is somewhat similar to what we saw in many countries in Europe where it appears around 20%. This was an Oxford research study. An Oxford research study said herd immunity may hit at about 20% of the population 
as opposed to 60 or 70% of the population and that would help to explain why deaths basically stopped in New York and why they basically stopped in Europe when 20% of the population was exposed. But we're on the backside now. The overall number of deaths, the overall number of cases are declining substantially and as a result we should be getting back to work we should be getting back to school and we should be getting back to sports. The Corona Bros in the sports media don't want that to happen. And I asked you this last night. I encourage you. We may take calls on this tomorrow. Who would be your Mount Rushmore of Corona Bros right now? If you could only pick four Corona Bros in sports media right now who would you pick? Here are my four although I'm open to the idea that they might be wrong. Uh, Darren Ravel, uh, Dan Woken, Mike Florio, and Peter King. That would be my Mount Rushmore of Corona Bros. Four dudes who are all rooting as hard as they can against sports coming back. They wanted Rob Manfred to cancel Major League Baseball as soon as they had the outbreak of the Marlins. As soon as any bad story comes out they run around like chickens with their heads cut off like their hair is on fire screaming oh my God, there's no way that we can actually play sports. Again, my opinion, Darren Ravel, Dan Woken, Mike Florio, and Peter King are the Corona Bros of the sports media and I got to say, they're getting dunked on. They're getting dunked on because they're so upset that sports is back yet they constantly try to claim that they aren't actually upset. All right? And so I think we need to get t-shirts made I need to talk to our t-shirt people. I need to get a Corona Bro, a Mount Rushmore of Corona Bros that we can start, that I can break out. I bet we would sell a lot of Mount Rushmore of Corona Bros with a big X through it. A big no, don't be a Corona Bro with like their faces on the Mount Rushmore of the Corona Bros. I think that would be a fantastic t-shirt and I would love to just break it out right here uh, for everybody to be able to see. We might have to start adding that for the VIPs. Uh, as a way to encourage people uh, to continue to sign up for the OutKick VIPs. I think we would sell a ton of them. Somebody just said a horrible t-shirt idea. You know who I think that guy is? A loser. (sighs) Probably a Corona Bro himself. I don't even know what else that guy has said but if I happen to look down and see somebody and think to myself would a normal human being with actual functional brain capacity actually have the, uh, the, the commenting like that I don't think so at all. And so that was wiped out by Clay Kyle. Alright, there's something else I think is important. There are a lot of people out there in the Corona Bro community that are saying hey, thank God we've got all of the people in sports who are drawing attention to social injustice. My argument here is we've got a major issue I believe with athletes actually making things worse as opposed to better. In particular, we have allowed the sports media and social media in general to demonize police. Let me just tell you this right now. Police are not perfect but if I have to choose who to line up with either police or people who are out rioting in city streets guess who I'm going to line up with? I want the police. Okay? We got to stop with this idea that everyone in the police deserves to be demonized. Notice what the media does. Every time there is a protest and riot begin they always say oh it's largely a peaceful protest. That's a cliche because it's said so often oh it's largely a a peaceful protest. Most people who are protesting are not actually rioting. But the vast majority of police are doing the best job that they can in an incredibly difficult environment and demonizing police actually leads to more death. The Wall Street Journal has a front page article from yesterday that I am reading from. It says that in the 50 largest cities in America right now homicides this year are up 24%. That is murders are skyrocketing. Do you know who most of the people being murdered are? They're black. So if you are going to argue Black Lives Matter and not say a word about all the work that police have done to protect black lives as well as white lives and Asian lives and Hispanic lives and American lives in general 
you are being fundamentally dishonest. James Harden had to apologize for wearing a Blue Lives Matter mask. Meanwhile, Black Lives Matter is written on the basketball court. Police protect thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives every single year. And these are real stats that are occurring right now in our cities. Chicago, sh homicides are up 52% in Chicago over last year. San Antonio, they're up 34%. Phoenix, they're up 32%. Philadelphia, they're up 31%. Houston, they're up 27%. New York, they are up 24%. New York has had the most shootings in 30 years this year. LA, they're up 14%. San Diego, they are up 12%. This is off the charts level failure in all of our nation's biggest cities. Why is this happening? Because athletes and social media and all these social justice warriors have demonized police and as a result police can't save lives like they should be. This is a failure of epic proportions and what frustrates me is it ties in with my larger theme of destruction over creation. It's a lot easier to destroy something than it is to create it. It's a lot easier to tear something down than it is to build it. Police are being demonized unfairly in this country. Defunding police is the dumbest idea in the 21st century that any political party has embraced and it's receiving serious attention. We know how this ends. Any of us who are old enough to remember the 1990s or the 1980s know that the fewer police there are on the streets, the more murders there's going to be, the more crime there's going to be, the more shootings there is going to be. I am fired up and sick of all the stupidity out there. All of these athletes who claim that they're making the world a better place are actually leading to more deaths because they have demonized the people that are most responsible for saving lives in this country, the police. This is absurd. It's absurd beyond belief. Uh, and I'm fired up about it. The Big Ten has decided to go to 10 games. That means all of college football is going to be playing 10 games, 9 conference games because there's only 10 teams in the Big 12, 1 non-conference game. That makes all 5 Power 5 conferences effectively with the exact same schedule. Uh, the PGA, speaking of sports, the PGA has been the least political of all sports. Last week, guess which organization had the highest ratings? The PGA. Golf has been the least political of all sports and with all sports returning, the PGA has been dunking on the NBA, Major League Baseball, and so far, hockey. Why has the PGA dominated? I would argue it's because they aren't embracing politics at all. They're just playing their sport. They're just there as an entertainment. The PGA Championship is this weekend and I believe the ratings for the PGA Championship will beat every other sport out there this week. That is a sign that going all in on politics is a bad move it's bad for your brand it's bad for viewership and it's going to do incredibly well the PGA to my knowledge I don't ever remember the PGA dunking on the NBA dunking on the NHL and dunking on Major League Baseball all balls in the face PGA style they're making the right decision and it obviously is paying off for them when it comes to actual television ratings. So props to the PGA for actually thinking about what fans want as opposed to getting woke and going broke. Uh, Zion. Zion is fat and out of shape. He's also an electric talent on the basketball court. I watched yesterday the game against the Grizz. I thought the Grizzlies having lost their first two, the Pelicans having lost their first two, this is a must-win game for both teams. And nobody could defend Zion down the stretch on the Grizz team. Zion not in good shape, lumbering up and down the court. I don't know what he's done in the offseason to try to get in shape, but he is still an electric transcendent talent and as a result, he is 
put the team basically on his back against the Grizz. Could the Grizz go 0-8, by the way, in the NBA bubble and miss the playoffs? It could happen. It could happen that the Grizz go 0-8 and miss the NBA playoffs despite the fact that a lot of their teams they're going up against aren't actually very good. Imagine what Zion's going to be capable of if he ever commits to actually getting in shape. He's an incredibly difficult guy to cover. And if he could actually ever play 30 minutes a game, it will be incredible to see what he is capable of. The Pac-12. Pac-12 is falling apart. The Pac-12. You notice how everybody in the media, all the Corona bros in the media, sports media, as soon as the Pac-12 players came out with their demands, they immediately got in line behind it. And they were like, oh, it's so brave of the Pac-12 players to come out with this list of demands. Good for them. It's a new era in college sports. And then you actually read it and you were like, uh, none of this makes sense. It's both uh, impossible and also illegal under existing federal and state law to actually be able to do anything that the Pac-12 wanted to argue. And so when you actually look at what the Pac-12 players argued for, I don't know who advised them, but it's like they were just all sitting around. Everybody's had one of these nights, late night in a dorm room, and you're like, hey, and what if we add, oh yeah, that's good. And what if we add, and they're all snap snapping, you know, like, oh yeah, great idea, great idea. And then you put the whole thing together, and there's absolutely no basis in reality to it whatsoever. That's what's going on right now with the, uh, with the Pac-12. Anybody who has a functional brain and looked at their list of demands said, yeah, this ain't going to happen. This is impossible legally. This is impossible from a business perspective. And these guys are not even going to sit out. This is the most, uh, this is the most overhyped revolution uh, since Chaz. Uh, sorry, the most overhyped revolution since Chaz, uh, which I believe has now blown up. I know they were trying to do their own declaration of independence in Chaz. Uh, I, I know they were uh, trying to come up with their own constitution. I think the Chaz government did not last very long in Seattle. Even the people in Chaz read the Pac-12 demands and they were like, ah, I think you're reaching a little here, bro. I don't think you're going to be able to get any of this stuff. That's where we are right now. Uh, when you actually look at the argument. Now, at least the Pac-12, a lot of people in sports media aren't that smart. This is not a grand surprise. But even they should have read this and been like, yeah, this is dead on arrival. There's no way any of this is actually going to be able to take place. Uh, Finally, I think I have talked about everything else. TikTok has been, the talk is that Microsoft is going to buy TikTok. Uh, Maybe now also Apple is involved. Look, here's the truth. I'm done chasing new social uh, social outlets. All right, I did Twitter. I've got a little bit every now and then, like every couple of weeks, I post something on Instagram. I've got a Facebook account. I've got, uh, I think I had a, sna- I think I still have a Snapchat account. Look, I'm too old. I'm 41 years old. I'm too old to be chasing every single new uh, new tech platform that's out there. So I haven't ever done TikTok. I don't know how it works. I don't know what in the world's going on with it. I'm sure my kids will be on it. But I am here to tell you that I agree with the decision that TikTok shouldn't be owned by any Chinese company. It needs to be owned here in America by Microsoft or by Apple or some other American-based corporation. I agree with this. I do not trust China. I think we are in a cold war with China and that China is trying to steal from us with reckless abandon. I think they are rigging our social media apps so that we are actually fighting amongst each other as opposed to actually realizing that China is punching us in the back of the head over and over and over again while we're arguing with each other. The sooner Americans realize we are in a cold war with China and we are in a battle to see who is going to own the 21st century, whether it's going to be a capitalistic democracy like us, or whether it's going to be an authoritarian government rooted in communism like China, the faster and sooner we are able to triumph. This is the battle of our lives, and many of us still don't recognize that we're in it. That's why I think the NBA is such an important metaphor, a tip of the spear for the battle between the United States and China, and the NBA has taken China side over the United States. All right. I love all of you. Best month ever in July. Encourage you to continue to download the Outkick podcast. My name is Clay Travis. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. I will be live in 
roughly a half hour on FS1 giving you gambling picks. Was not a good day yesterday for me gambling picks. I went 0 for 3 but I am still your king and I'm going to bounce back with some good PGA Championship gambling picks for you coming up on uh, FS1 at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central, 2 o'clock Mountain, 1 o'clock Pacific. I love all of you. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP, stand up to China. It's important that we all realize that we are in a new Cold War and we have to win it. I have to win it. I love all of you. Kisses. See y'all. Bye. See y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Facebook.